Hello everyone, welcome to Harrison High School's open house. If you could please make your way to the theater to receive information on gifted services in Cobb County. And then after that, you will proceed to your classes. Thank you. Hi, my name is Randy Genesi, gifted services representative for the Cobb County School District. Our vision here at the Advanced Learning Department is to promote a rigorous curricular content that uses critical inquiry, creativity, communication of complex thoughts, and an authentic approach to learning. Our goals are to develop both cognitive and effective skills, and also enrich and extend the Georgia Standards of Excellence. In our classrooms, you may find teachers doing such things as project-based learning, student interest projects, accelerated content, and process-driven instruction. Thank you so much for attending our open house presentation. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact us here at the Advanced Learning Department. Okay, parents, it's time to move on to your next class. It is time to move on to your next class. Um, Ms. McGinnis, how do you encourage your students if they're struggling with a concept? My students, so when my students are struggling, um, I do try to incorporate like differentiated tasks and scaffolded tasks to, you know, to get everybody help everyone get to the level I want them to be at. But one of the biggest things that I promote in my classroom is a growth mindset. So growth mindset, instead of saying, you don't understand this or you failed this, we say, we don't understand it yet. Everyone's gonna have days in algebra where they're not sure what's going on. Like the concept doesn't make sense from the first time because a lot of it's very new and different than what they've seen before. So the biggest thing I wanna do with them is instead of them being intimidated by the math, just automatically checking out I want them to say I don't understand this yet I need to ask more questions I need to look at some more problems I need to focus on what I do know how to do so that um, I can grow and understand this better later Miss McGinnis what are some ways that you address the social needs of your gifted students good question so one of the ways that I address the social needs of my gifted students is through flexible grouping. So a lot of times in a regular classroom, a not a, like that's not differentiated like our gifted classrooms, gifted students or high achieving students are used more as peer tutors. Like, oh, you finished your work, go help with someone else. And that's not what I do in my classroom. So flexible grouping, my groups change based on um, what we're doing that day. So if I have a bunch of students who have mastered the concept and are ready to move on, I'll group them together so they're with people, academic peers that all understand the concept and maybe give them an enrichment to task or more challenging problems to tackle. That way in my groups, my other groups might be the kids who understand but still need more practice at the basic level or really need a lot of help. So the groups are more based on level and your academic peers rather than, oh, you understand it, go help someone else. So flexible grouping is probably the biggest way that I try and accommodate for their social needs. Okay, parents, it's time to move on to your next class. It is time to move on to your next class. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. I am Senora Thomas. And I'm Senora Quinones. And tonight we're going to talk to you guys about Spanish to Honors. Uh, before we jump into that, I kind of just want to give you a breakdown of what to expect in a Spanish 2 class. In our Spanish 2 class, we're going to cover a variety of thematic units. We're going to go from vacations all the way to health, food, um, clothes, all those different kinds of thematic units. And in those units, students will cover an array of vocabulary, grammar from present to past, and as well as cultural lessons, going shopping in a different country or eating in a different country. Okay. Any questions so far? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so what is the difference between an on-level Spanish course and then honors Spanish 2? The difference between our on-level and our honors is that we use novels as a form of enrichment. Our students are gonna read a short novel, nothing too long, right? We don't wanna scare them right away, um, but they will be reading uh, a short novel and they're going to be using that to expand their vocab, expand their cultural knowledge. Um, and yeah, so it's a great tool for them. They, they seem to really enjoy it. Absolutely. They get the, you know, listening skills, the reading skills. And at the same time, when we have an activity, when we want them to write about what we've actually been reading, they're working on their writing skills as well. So it's just developing their skills all around. 
Any questions so far? Yes. How are the students assessed in an honors level class? That's a great question. Students are assessed quite differently between the on level and the honors level course. Um, actually, in our honors level course, we try to focus on our three modes of communication. I'll go into that in a minute. But what I mean by that is that students aren't tested or assessed on, can you take a quiz? Can you take a test? We focus on different things. So our three modes um, of assessment are gonna be interpersonal, interpretive, and presentational. Um, the interpersonal mode, that's when a student can communicate with somebody else. Mm -hmm. This can be written or this can be spoken, right? Students can write an email. Can they have a conversation? That would be interpersonal. Interpretive is can you comprehend what you are reading or what you're listening to? So that's comprehension skills right there. And that's what we work on when we do the novel. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then our last one is presentational. People get very confused with the, this one. It doesn't mean can you present. This is can you produce work? Can you write sentences, essays? Presentation is part of it, right? Can you give us information? So those are our three modes of communication. So we're not gonna be saying, hey, can I take a quiz? Can I take a test? No. Okay, parents, it's time to move on to your next class. It is time to move on to your next class. Good evening, and thank you for coming to Chemistry Open House. This is an honors class. Uh, which is slightly different than a general class in that it um, allows a little more student freedom as long as it's safe. Um, the students will be allowed to work together in groups to develop their concepts and develop their knowledge of chemistry standards and eventually we would like to put those standards in uh, practice so they will be applying what they have learned in the laboratory setting. We like to encourage them to explore, make mistakes, which we say are not really mistakes, they're just learning opportunities, and then they will take those, that information and build upon it and build their knowledge of chemistry concepts. It'll be very much student-centered. I will kind of be a facilitator, not really an instructor, and I'm just there to make sure that they get where they need to be by the end of the semester in a safe environment. They will be allowed to um, experiment. Um, they will be allowed to think out loud. They'll be allowed to work in groups. And hopefully by the end, they will be confident enough in their knowledge that when they go on to college, they'll have a strong foundation for that first freshman chemistry class. If there are any questions, I'll take those down. All right, so um, what does honors chemistry do that would be different than an on-level course? That's a great question. Um, students are encouraged in honors chemistry to actually develop their own knowledge versus direct instruction in general chemistry. Um, application of knowledge is a key criterion um, for honors classes. Students are encouraged to try new things, take risks, learn that, uh, that it's okay not to be right all the time. And especially in chemistry, we have many trials and we learn something from every mistake. And so it's, we put an emphasis on um, being able to reevaluate what we've done to make sure that uh, it's okay not to have the right answers all time, all the time. It's okay not to be a perfectionist. Um, but what's most important is that you learn from the mistakes that you made as you are developing your knowledge. Okay, parents, it's time to move on to your next class. It is time to move on to your next class. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Honors World Literature. My name is Lindsay Riley. And I just want to express so much how thankful I am that you all come to Open House. It just shows how invested you are in your kids' education, and that matters so much to me. If you have any questions about anything, please feel free to ask me um, at any time, kind of, you know, after the conversation, that way you can ask individual needs or just kind of questions in general about the class itself. Honors World Literature is a standard classroom, which means it has both gifted and non-gifted students in it. 
And I wanna make sure that you as gifted parents understand that the needs of your kids are being met. So one way that this is done, um, a study from McAllister and Saylor, they said that the most optimal learning environments are the ones where scholastic rigor is kind of like the standard. So I make it a point that I'm making and creating rigorous lessons that both stimulate the intellectual needs, but then also their desire to know more about their life. And that's what's so beautiful about Honors World is it's this connection between cultures. So we do this through the types of text that the kids are gonna read. So they're gonna read um, perspectives from the Nigerian culture, from the Chinese culture, that foundational knowledge from Greek theater, and then a ton of poetry, which allows them to challenge themselves. And it's, a, it's important that the kids do, you know, challenge their reading stamina and also their vocabulary. So I wanna make sure that I'm providing an environment that does that. I also ensure that all of my lessons are relevant to kids at this time period because it is so important they feel like that they are connected to the material that they're learning. So then it's applicable as they go out into the real world, which is what's next for them. So I make sure that the lessons we have are, you know, fun. Like I do want them to have a nice time. So there's a variety of assessments that I use aside from reading and writing, even though reading and writing are prominent. I also know the importance of peer connection that exists within gifted students. So what I make sure that I do is that I don't just always have them doing independent work. As you can see, the desks right now are in pairs, which is nice, so they're doing a lot of pair activities. But then I also like doing group activities where the gifted kids are grouped together to kind of challenge their thinking, which allows them then to get kind of deeper and have that deeper analysis of reading it and just not stand at a surface level summarization. Most important, I do want you to know that I understand that kids are kids and they have emotional and social needs that need to be fulfilled. So, you know, a lot of kids sometimes, they don't see the reason to do something. So what I like to do is kind of create this environment that is very open so they're honest with me, but then also kind of honing that back in and saying like, look, you know, there is benefit in this. And I do make sure that they know that for everything that we're doing, there is benefit and that they're gonna see the connection throughout the course of the semester. So, you know, that's one thing that I really want you to know is that I am here for your students. I am gonna be their cheerleader, I am gonna be their support system, and I am gonna be their educator. So I think it's very important that you know that about me kind of moving forward. So does anyone have any questions at this point um, that I can answer for you to help clarify some information? Yeah, sure, go ahead. If I understand correctly, you have both gifted and non-gifted students in this class. How are you gonna make sure that um, the needs of your gifted learners are met in a blended environment? I understand that. I understand that there are gifted students in both gifted and non-gifted environments that are bored to tears because of you know the way that the curriculum is set up. So one thing that I try to do is really create that engaging learning environment that allows them to really connect with the material that we're learning and also making it relevant because like I said, you know, with relevancy comes interest. And when kids are interested, no matter what kind of level of you know activities that we're doing, they invest themselves and that's kind of you know a big to do and that kind of goes for everybody you know when they're engaged then they're more connected and once they realize that they're beyond this idea of simple and mundane then you know they engage in it which is great so i'm going to make sure that i take on that responsibility to ensure that they're receiving their education that is appropriate that is engaging and challenging because then it will push them beyond their potential okay um, I'm sure that other parents in the room can probably agree. Um, my son is a perfectionist and he will continue to do things over and over until he feels that it is complete. Um, how do you go about building his confidence and the confidence of other kids just to eliminate the need to be such a perfectionist in the room? I completely understand because when I was growing up, I was a perfectionist. <laughs> you know, I wanted to make sure every little detail, every little element was perfect and exactly, you know, up to standard and everything. So I understand that exists and that exists for so many gifted students, this idea of perfectionism. And I just want them to understand that nothing in the world is perfect. And, you know, by the time that I had finally learned that, I still care a lot, like it still allows me to show that, I'm, that I care about what I'm doing and I'm motivated, but I don't get upset with myself if something is not 100% perfect. So I wanna make sure that I instill that in them too, to realize that that's just something that no one can achieve that. Not one person on the planet is perfect. Okay parents, it's time to move on to your next class. It is time to move on to your next class. 
All right, so to recap, the gifted environment in my classroom is one that offers a safe and welcoming learning environment for your students. It provides a level of challenge and rigor in both the content and the assessments. And it encourages a learning environment from others with a student-centered lesson and structure. Okay, so before we go, are there any questions that I can answer about your student and my classroom? Ms. Walsh, you stated that your room promotes engagement and motivation. Could you explain what areas you were talking about again? Each of these levels have a different range of mastery. For example, a 92% to 100, an 80 to 91, and 68 to a 79. I put up the percentage of students that fit within these categories for each test. How are you comparing to your other classrooms? Are you within this distinguished learner category? Okay. Can we get our class higher in a percentage? Okay. In the 50s, even the 74s as you see here in fourth period. The back wall is a wall about mathematics and careers. I want to bring your students' interests out within my classroom. The career of their choice right now has math in it. Do they know what math is involved? How hard do they have to focus in each of our classes in order to achieve their ultimate goal? So this motivator is an intrinsic one pushed out to be more external, okay, more visual. Where are you trying to go? Can you do it? Do you still want to do this prof profession based on the level of math, the level of rigor, the content involved? On this right hand wall, I gauge success. There are three thermometers and for every A earned, the thermometer rises and that's every A earned on a test. Okay. Once I have a class size or about a half a class size of eggs for each test, they earn a food day. Okay. I'm encouraging your student to push their expectations. They want to be a part of their classroom success. I do understand every student's level of success is different, but I'm pushing the expectation. I want them to try and achieve that A that they're wanting. Ms. Walsh, my, my student prefers to work alone, but it seems that you always have them in groups. Why can she not work by herself? Interestingly enough, there is research out there that discusses that gifted students have this belief or this innate quality that they just want to work alone. Okay? This research comes from a woman named Lisa French and her colleague okay, at a Ropier Institute. And what they say, and I quote, is, Gifted students might express a preference to work with others when learning is appropriate to their learning goals and if the nature of interaction supports their needs as well as those of others. So what does this mean? Group work should not be a daunting task. Your child, your gifted student, should not be forced to be the leader of that group and carry the burden of the work. But that's what they relate group work to. In this classroom, we build a structure that everybody is responsible and should be working to an ultimate goal. So when a student feels supported in that culture, that the group work is a healthy collaboration and their efforts aren't gone unnoticed and their group is contributing, then group work is welcomed. And that's why your student works in groups. They work in pairs to learn how to work together and to achieve a goal. Okay. They do have an opportunity to work by themselves but they need that collaboration. They need to know how to work with somebody to achieve an ultimate goal. Parents, thank you so much for attending Open House. We look forward to having a great year with you and your students. Have a great evening.